بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والصلاة والسلام على النبي الكريم صلى الله عليه وسلم. Today I have the honor of introducing our speaker, Honorable Sahib Zadeh Sultan Ahmed Ali, who is one of the main custodians of the shrine of Sultan Al Arifin Hazrat Sultan Babu in District Jung, Pakistan. He is a 10th generation descendant of the saint who lived from 1630 to 1691, spanning the reigns of the Mughal Emperor Shah Jahan and Aurangzeb. Sultan Babu became a disciple of a Qadri Murshid, who sent him to Delhi for spiritual and Islamic learning and training and on the basis of his writings, Sultan Babu seems to have been quite, become quite learned in Persian and Arabic. Sultan Babu probably needs no introduction for Pakistanis, especially for those who speak Punjabi. And I have learned uh, with the visit of Sultan Sahib that I should broaden that to say that his uh, name and fame of Sultan Babu is also there in India and also among um, communities such as the Sikhs and Hindus who respect uh, and uh, embrace uh, the teachings of his poetry. And even as far as Bangladesh, I should have and Afghanistan, so that kind of pan, um, pan South Asian uh, cultural area. Um, scholarly opinion about Sultan Bahu uh, to date seems to be that he is rather understudied as a figure. There is still a lot of work to be done. Uh, we have some translations of his poetry, some academic uh, articles and studies, but he's really a prolific author. He's, he's best known for his Punjabi poetry, Abhyat, but he has dozens, if not more than a hundred, of works in Persian, uh, some still in manuscript. So in other words, there's a lot still, be, still to be done, and actually part of the uh, service and uh, mission of the organizations that um, uh, uh, Sultan Sahib is working with is to make this legacy of uh, Sultan Bahu available for study and to disseminate his teachings uh, more widely. By the way, the name Bahu means with him. And most of Sultan Babu's poems end with the refrain, which uh, means him, the one, the divine. So it's a kind of zikr or weird embedded in this uh, poetry. Sultan Babu holds a significant place among the popular Sufi poets writing in the vernacular languages on the basis of the Punjabi verses in Abhyat. The major themes of his poetry, and I'm imagining we're going to, to learn something about these themes in today's lecture, they're resonant with the writings of poets such as Rumi, who lived 400 years earlier, as well as the poetic traditions of the Indian subcontinent. For example, transcending externals and sectarianism, um, and even at times adopting the female voice as the lover of the divine. You may be familiar, some of you may be familiar, with couplets such as the following, notably sung by Abda Pardeen. 
नामे आलम नामे फाजू न मुफ्ती न खाजी खूब न दिल मेरा दोजख मांगे न शौक बहशते राजी हूँ नामे ठड़ी ही रोजे रखे नामे पाक नमाजी हूँ बाज विशाल दे बाहू दुनिया खोरी बाजी हो The world is but a game, Bapu, unless union with the divine is attained. Our guest, who I'm introducing today, along with his work on Sultan Bapu, our guest Sultan Sa has been an active religious leader, writer, speaker, and debater for the past 15 years. His writings engage multiple topics. Ranging from international relations to philosophy, the reformation of humanity and society, Pakistan studies, fiqh, and the unity of the Muslim community. He also received a master's in Persian literature from Punjab University, where his main expertise focused on Sufi poetry. One of his achievements that I think you will be exposed to today is that he is a treasury, a zahira of poetry and citations in Arabic, Persian, uh, Urdu, and Punjabi that he has memorized. And this achievement. Especially for some of the younger people, you may never have even encountered this kind of, you know, um, wonderful uh, treasury that was such a part of Muslim culture. Being able to move across languages and cite a line of poetry and how it relates to some other line of poetry, this kind of interlinguistic capacity. And this evocation of memory, which is disappearing today in a world of tweets and artificial intelligence, so feel that you have touched, you know, something very rare and uh, precious. Sultan Sahab bridges multiple worlds, not only the East and increasingly the West. But also the challenges of making Islamic spirituality uh, uh, relevant for contemporary times and the new generation. One of his responsibilities is the chairmanship of a research think tank called the Muslim Institute, with branches in Islamabad and London. And this is not just like a what a sucking board, the Muslim Institute, but this is a huge, um, you know, establishment with wonderful facilities and lots of individuals working tirelessly to carry um, the message forward. Uh, he also oversees an on online Oxford-style debate platform, the Muslim Debate. He's involved to oversee the journal Muslim Perspectives and an internationally distributed magazine, Mirat Al Arafin. Um, he, uh, furthermore, the Jamaat and Tanzim, following Sultan Bahu, have a very large nationwide network in Pakistan with offices in nearly every district. <laughs> Through which hundreds and thousands of motivated members are carrying forward the message of Sultan Babu. Other perhaps unexpected dimensions of Sultan Sahab's activities include tent pegging and equestrian expertise. And I would now like to turn the floor over to Sultan Sahab. 